Hi, everyone. And thank you so much for being here to help the children and families that are suffering. Uh, everyone, I think, loves cookies. And this activity is, uh, is <laughs> will help children to recover and adults as well. And I call it the gingerbread person. And it involves very simple materials, paper, and a set of colored markers, pencils, or crayons. Uh, you don't need to have this many, but I recommend at least, at least if they're available so that children can use them to color the shapes and the colors of what they're noticing inside. So this particular felt cutout was a gift from one of my students and it's very nice to use with little kids. You can, they can cut out shapes and colors of felt instead of doing the drawing if they're not able to hold a, a marker. So you could use this with children as, as young as uh, two and a half or three, all the way up to adults. So I'm gonna show you my collection of gingerbread people from usually that I use with children from age four to adult. I'll show you an example of different ages and stages. But I also wanted to explain the rationale for this. And um, I'm going to present a little slide presentation. So bear with me a moment while I share the screen. So I am so happy to present this because it has worked for uh, all different situations. I've used it with children escaping from uh, the grief and pain of loss from national, natural disasters that have been massive uh, loss of their homes. I've used it with children that were sexually abused and I've used it with children that have been attacked. I've also used it with adults going through loss. And I find that it's very valuable because when there's been shock trauma, the nervous system loses its equilibrium and its balance. And in order to restore the balance between the brain, that's our, you know, what we, we think and what we feel and the body, which is the nervous system and how it informs our limbs and as well as our organs like our heart and our belly, um, how we can reset it help children to reset, adults to reset the connection with their body again through drawing. And I'll show you how to do that. But first I wanted to explain why this is so important and how we can integrate the brain. Um, just very simply, the brain has circuits that are connected with one another but to simplify it, there are, besides the right and left hemisphere, there are also um, brain, different parts of the brain that evolved at different times. And the instinctual or survival brain that you see in purple at the bottom is the brain that only understands physical sensations. And usually people don't sit around and talk about the sensations, but this is critical in healing trauma. Um, if you go up from the bottom to the middle one, the social brain or the midbrain speaks with emotional feelings. And most people know the feelings. Little kids will have trouble labeling their feelings. And this is really where they need the adult's help. But for little children, it's as simple as mad, sad, glad, and afraid and disgust. And for older children, it can be very nuanced, such as you know, disappointment and grief and uh, feeling enraged. So that part, of, that part of the brain is called the midbrain. And it's, it, we share that with all the mammals. If you go up to the green part, the learning brain, that part speaks with words. That labels things. It interprets and makes meaning from our experiences. So my work is based on 
family constellation work. It's also based on um, humanistic psychology and gestalt. But my primary work for healing trauma is somatic experiencing. And what we learn from somatic experiencing is that that the survival brain is what's affected and go to balance and to bring it back we have to help children to be able to feel and tolerate their sensations as well as to move through them so that they can begin to feel the emotions without getting overwhelmed and they can also label them and when they label them with words, you're integrating the learning part or the neocortical part of the brain. So all three parts of the brain are in synchronicity. And this is so important in healing trauma. So the way to help kids to, to feel what's happening in their survival brain and to regulate the emotions by feeling their sensations is through the, the gingerbread part gingerbread person. Uh, it's um, rather than a stick figure, this gingerbread cookie has a lot of open space for children to share what's happening inside the body. So I call it the emotion and sensation body map. And if you look carefully at the bottom, there's a code, just like some maps have a code to show where the mountains and the rivers are. In the olden days before the GPS, <laughs> when you, we used maps, they showed where, the, where everything was. We want the children to be able to show and label the sensations inside. If the child isn't writing yet, they could tell the words to the adult and the adult could write it for them. And you can make a circle or a square and they can color in the sensation or the shape that they're feeling. And if you notice, this is not unusual. There's a lot of mixed feelings. Um, this particular child was feeling very angry and sad at the same time, which is not uncommon. And they showed the at when asked to show where, if they could color and show how the anger feels, colored the red in their fists and their hands with the. Uh, radiating beams coming out to show how angry they were. And they were also under, they started to cry and underneath the tears came the sadness and they show the blue around their heart and the blue with the tears and the mouth and the lump in the throat. So we don't wanna leave and the, the, the child was also feeling very frightened for their own safety, whether it's a bully or they're fleeing from a, a war zone with, with um, planes and bombs going off overhead. So very often what they'll feel is the jitteriness that they felt when it was happening, even though they're safe now. And so you want them to share where in their body they're feeling it. And in this case, the child was scared, but I had to ask, when you feel scared, can you draw the colors and wear in the body? And this is very important because once the child is able to draw it, some of the uh, feeling dissipates. And if they can put a sensation word. So when you're scared, if you're, are you scared right now? Yes. If you're scared right now, um, can you show the shape of what that's like. And is there a word that goes with that? In this case, you can see the up and down squiggly lines and the child said jittery. I've had children say, it feels like a bunch of bugs in there or butterflies flying in different directions. Uh, I had one child say it felt like, cause I live near the Mexican border. It felt like Mexican jumping beans, which is a game that children play where the beans hop up and down all over. So you can let the children make up their own words. Um, very often when children are stuck in freeze or dissociated, 
there's parts of the body that will feel numb or tight or stressed. In this case, the shoulders were tight. Sometimes they, the muscles get tight to hold back from actually hurting someone when they're mad. Because before we can use our arms or legs for fighting or trying to escape, we have to tighten the muscles. So if it's not appropriate, because the child's at school or in a safe place where they're home, but they're still carrying the anger that they're feeling, very often they'll have to, they won't even realize that it's all unconscious. Their muscles will tighten so that they don't actually hurt anybody and they hold back. But we want them to be aware of the tightness because once they become aware, it's almost like, and they start to color it, magically the tight sensation starts to dissipate. And so does the trauma because the trauma is held in the muscles, the limbs, the, the muscles in the limbs and the internal muscles of our autonomic nervous system, which is our, our throat and heart and lungs and uh, our stomach and, and belly. So one and all the organs that, that uh, create hormones in our system. So once the body releases the tightness or the, the um, feelings that we have, so does the trauma dissolve. Now what's important before I show examples and I'll also show you some more sensation words is that we do what's in SE is called pendulation. And that means if the child draws everything that's uncomfortable and doesn't have any places in the body where they show resource, which would mean places where they feel comfortable or places where they feel strong, then we need to help them find it. So with this child, the question would be, is there any place in the body that feels okay or that actually feels good? And the child noticed that their legs felt strong and calm. And so to draw those places too. And the child gets a visual uh, impression of them, themselves that they're not all anger or sadness, that they also have strength. So it helps the child and the adults around them that are supporting them to see their resources. Are there any questions so far? I've got, um, two people in my audience that are my, my angels that are making this recording for you, uh, Sladka and Tereska, my, my very, very, very dear colleagues in, from Czech Republic. Do you have any questions so far that might help the people that are watching? Um, maybe, Maggie, I have one. Uh, uh -huh. If uh, the kids is not able to find any positive feeling in the body, if, if. Oh, that's a, that's a wonderful question. Yes. Then what you do is you have them make some movement because movement is medicine. I'm going to say that again. Movement is medicine, especially when you're working with shock trauma. The children get frightened because they have to, ha they've been, they had to be immobile. And so many of the children that you're working with have maybe had to hide for a long time. And so you can play a simple game with just tossing a ball or a bean bag or, um, and, or having them do, if you have nothing, to have them do jumping jacks or running in place and do it long enough so that their heartbeat can start um, activating enough that they can feel it. And maybe they can put their hand on their heart and until and they can say, I feel my heart now. It's pumping really fast, like I do when I run. And then you can even have them run a little bit longer in place. And then you can have them go back and do the drawing. And very often, especially if the adults are playful and have a sense of humor and know how to engage the child with kind eyes, 
the um, which are some of the eight essentials I talked about in an earlier video, that the child will then feel connected to their own body and they'll feel connected to the adults that are supporting them. And then you have them do the drawing. And I've never seen that not work. If it does, come back to me and I will help you see if we can come together with some new ideas. Uh, but it, it usually really helps because movement is medicine. Okay, thank you for the question. Let's move on. So this poster was created by two of my former students, uh, Chris Downing, who's a social worker that works in the schools with school-aged children and was a supervisor of the social workers. And uh, Salima Ali Khan, who was uh, also a student and she's an artist. And they work together on this poster because most of the posters uh, show emotions, but the emotional center is where the children experience grief from loss. But if they're stuck in freeze, they're stuck in denial and are numb, um, then we need to help them with sensations before they can even begin the grieving process. Otherwise they'll say, I don't feel anything or I'm okay, I'm fine. But the adults looking at them notice they're not fine because they may not, they may have difficulty with sleeping or eating. They may have nightmares. The child feels numb during the day because of the uh, chemicals, the neurotransmitters that are causing them to be dissociated and not in touch with their bodies. So we need to help them to be able to engage the body to heal because that's all part of resetting the nervous system at the physiological level at, of the instinctual brain or brainstem. The brainstem works together with the cerebellum, which is the, the center for quick reflex for fight or flight and a fight, flight, or freeze. So this poster is, is wonderful because if you just look at the pictures and choose one that makes you feel good inside and check with your own body. And then, or maybe you're not feeling so good today and you can look at the poster and find one that shows how you're feeling today. Some of them, this is for pendulation, show good feelings. And some of them feel feelings that are uncomfortable. Um, so I'm going to show you my favorite feeling and how I like to feel the best. Well, there's two of my favorites. The center one, which is grounded and open. And you can notice the posture. When children release the trauma, they feel open. They feel curious and they feel playful. And also they're connected to their body. So they feel grounded. Um, another favorite of mine is in the lower left-hand corner with the girl that's balancing in the water. She's in a stream or a lake and there's, there's some rocks and she's feeling cool and balanced. And her arms, you can imagine them moving up her reflexes are working to help her get good balance and to feel playful and happy. So um, I know when I'm not feeling well, the one I relate to the most is the heavy stuck feeling of the boy just above her who feels like he's burdened with a boulder. So I would like for you, maybe uh, Tereska or Sladka might pick out one to show how they're feeling today. And when she, while she's doing that, you can pick out one that describes as a visual image of how you may be feeling inside your body. Not a thought, not from the neocortex, but actually from your instinctual sense brain that senses. Would you like to share something? So I can start and then Tereska. Okay. I, I find this easy breath, this sitting in the lotus, uh, um, lotus 
in Lotus. Oh, <laughs> flower. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes. Yeah. And when I saw the picture, so I started really breathe more deeper. And my shoulders started to be more relaxed. Like it's really, uh, there's more movement and more softness in my, uh, in my arms. So yeah, so just feeling this picture with big breath and softness. And just hearing you talk about it, I just got a deeper breath myself. So thank you for that. Yeah. Tereska, did you want to share one? Yes, I have two, actually, and one is, uh, I like this relaxed and settled, this little bit how I feel now, uh -huh. and it also makes me good feelings in my belly, and then I really like this pumped, charged, because it reminds me that my dog is waiting for me always to go outside, and it's really refreshing <laughs> uh -huh. i and i really so like her and it makes me you know this uh, very nice connection with her when you feel that pumped feeling inside um what it, where do you feel it in your body can you locate that feeling of excitement or charge yeah it's really warm warming and joyful mm. like yeah little movement in my chest and in my face and in my eyes okay oh that's that's a great example so you can ha have children draw pictures like this as well it doesn't have to be the gingerbread um, outline but sometimes they need the outline to get them started so i'd like to show you some examples of children um, i'm going to make this slide presentation available and you are welcome because I happen to be very close friends with the, uh, the creators of this and I have permission, I have copyright permission. So you have my permission to, to make this bigger, to show it to children and then have them draw their own pictures and their own language with how they're feeling inside. But now let's go back to the gingerbread because it's a great way to get started was a four-year, I was going to start with the youngest one I've ever done. This was a four-year-old child. Um, I'm sorry, the words are, they're sort of in Spanish. They're actually in Catalan. That was a daughter, um, somebody, uh, one of the students I worked with in Spain, in Barcelona. So I can't read the words, even though I read Spanish, uh, some of them. But um, uh, the picture up on top, on the left, shows uh, the child was extremely upset. Don't worry about the Halloween bats. That just was a notepad that the child was scribbling on because that was all the paper that was available. So forget the spiders and the bats. <laughs> um, the child scribbled and the child, the child, um, the father played with the child. Um, I don't know whether they played a ball or toss or tickling or something, but the, the parent engaged with the eight essentials and then the child drew colors that were different afterwards. And you can see it went from all black to multicolored. And then later, another picture where she felt more tranquil uh, or calm. And the only place that she felt uncomfortable was her face and her legs. Her legs felt very tired and her eyes and her face felt tired as well. Um, this is very typical with children that have had shock trauma. Sometimes they can feel parts of their body, but their legs might feel tight, like they wanted to run but couldn't. And in a case like, or sometimes they just need to rest. So you can ask the child, if your legs are tired, uh, would you prefer resting? Or would you like to see if you can run in place and see if you can wake your legs up? And then if the child runs in place, sometimes they feel better. And then maybe the face will change too. This was the same little girl. You can uh, see an example of all the different colors she used. That's why I recommend the more colors, the better, but to have at least six if you don't have more available. Um, and 
This was again after playing with her dad, she had happiness all over and love in her heart. And there's the one where she was sad. And then again, after playing with her father, how things changed um, with simple art and play. See, so if the child can identify how they're feeling when they don't feel so good, and then they play and they can identify how they feel afterwards through colors and shapes, what happens is they, their, their um, neocortical brain has a new meaning that my feelings can change, that I can have uncomfortable feelings, but then they can change. Uh, I don't have to stay stuck. Here's a, an example of a child who actually had a medical trauma, which I'm not going into during this pre short presentation, but the, he felt trapped and he felt the black on his arms and legs were holding him in place. And his mother, who was in the room at the time, said those straps that felt so uncomfortable were actually what the doctor, the, the medical staff used to hold him in place to get medical treatments. Many of children and adults coming from war are going to need medical treatments. And if they're babies, they may be strapped down to hold them still. And he still remembered in his, um, not in his mind, he didn't know, he was surprised when his mom told him, but his implicit or unconscious memory remembered being trapped. And so we did some movement exercises afterwards. I don't have the after picture um, because we didn't do an after picture because he felt so much better. Um, it wasn't time for that, but I made the, the key bigger to show you the words don't have to be adult words. And he had no emotion because he was a newborn. So newborns, they have sensations. So they live in the world of survival. That's all they know because they haven't developed the circuitry so much for the emotions that we feel as we get older. So all of his words are sensation words and that's just fine. Um, the tingly pink feelings were good feelings, um, happy feelings. Uh, and they were mostly around his heart and the tickly feelings were okay. The weird feelings and the funny feelings were neutral. So you see another example. This was an eight-year-old child. Here's an example of a teen who had been attacked and actually brutalized. Uh, and these were his, his drawings after playing with juggling sticks and using the eight essentials of kind eyes and laughter and fun. And then he drew, he came in feeling stuck and frozen and not wanting to do anything and tired. And after uh, about 15 minutes of play, he made this drawing for him, for me. He had spiked hair like teenagers do. And he drew, he started with only one color the red, he said, was tingly, and it showed energy and it equaled happy feelings radiating out into his arms and down his legs. And then I asked him if he'd be willing to take a little more time to see if some of those feelings spread any place else. And I told him that after he did that, he could pick another color. And he picked yellow and he showed the arrows going all the way down to his feet, showing how his feet relaxed when he paid attention. Uh, I just wanna make a note that when children come out of numbness, freeze and dissociation, and they start to thaw, once the danger's away, we've got a picture there of an opossum rolled up in a ball to hide from the predator and when the predator goes away and the child feels safe, they will start to maybe feel anxious or angry. And so uh, that's a good time for them to notice where they feel the anger or where they feel the anxiety. And I made a list of the places to help the child. So you can direct them to noticing their red energy. Um, my colleague Lael from Brazil calls the angry energy of healthy aggression to protect ourselves red energy. 
and they usually feel it either in their fuel tank, I call the belly, stomach, chest, throat, and face their fuel tank, and the muscles are how they protect themselves. The red energy goes into the shoulders, arms, legs, fists, and face, especially <laughs> the eyes for glaring, so to make the predator go away. So you can use the body map to show angry feelings, also anxious feelings as well. I'm gonna show you another drawing. This was a child that was sexually abused uh, and she dissociated and she showed her face as being blank and foggy. And she showed a lot of excitement and that excited energy and the jumpy energy are really the energy for movement and protection. And I know we don't have a lot of time, but you can see how the colors are layered. This is an 11 year old who has a lot more nuances of her emotion and her legs wanted to kick the predator. And so you see the jumpy anxious feelings in the legs and you can see the orange and yellow jumpy anxious feelings underneath the scare and the numbness. And so I had her move her legs to show me how she would protect herself and she wanted to kick. And in kicking, the anxiousness went away. And I explained to her how those jumpy feelings are really the, the energy to make movements to protect yourself. And now you can, you can show your, your body how to protect itself from now on. The body doesn't care that it happened earlier. The body just wants to not be stuck anymore and to begin to develop capacity in the midbrain for a new survival memory. And when you bring children to feelings of triumph in your presence in present time, what happens is the hippocampus that stores our survival memory has a new memory instead of just dissociating, it also now knows how to kick. I just uh, enlarged this so you could see how important the key is on the side to begin to label the emotion and the sensation to help the child, again, integrate the three parts of the brain. The brain that speaks with words, the midbrain that speaks with emotion, and the instinctual brain that heals trauma that speaks in um, sensations like jumpy and calm. And the last one I wanna show you is, I've even used the gingerbread with autistic children. This was an autistic nine-year-old who had no sense of his sensations or, or his feelings. And after working with him for quite a while, it wasn't easy. He was able to draw a gingerbread person and, and, sh and you color it black and brown to show me he was mad. Okay, the last set is working with an adult. This is the same adult who was experiencing a loss of a partner. And she was very sad and felt the feelings came up, even though she was an adult of when she was a little girl being abandoned. Um, and so uh, the sad feelings, this adult woman felt like such a little girl. And so she drew her person herself as a little girl. And then after she saw herself as a little girl, she didn't want to feel that way anymore. She wanted to feel her her power as an adult. So she did the gingerbread drawing as a, a woman, a grown woman. And she wrote uh, in her journal that she felt sad. And, uh, and then she drew all the different colors, colors of freedom, of an unsteadiness in her belly, of anger in her face, of some shame and sadness and heartbreak. Uh, I'm not gonna go through all the reading but uh, she also sh so showed some sense of freedom in her feet, wanting to move forward with her life and not being stuck there. And she worked through all those feelings. It took about a half an hour. And then this was her next drawing. This was all within one hour's time, maybe 45 minutes. And then she started to feel more open and determined and actually sexy and strong and happy. And then her last drawing was uh, a feeling of having humor and feeling happy and ready to move forward in her life. So um, well, that's the end of my collection.
What I would like to end with, if we have time, this is another student of mine, uh, Amir Paz from uh, Molumbimbi in Australia. Uh, I was teaching a class, a play shop in Sydney, and he happens to be a musician and also uh, tries to heal the world of trauma and work with children as well as adults. And he made a song that shows the pendulation of, we can't deny, I mean, we could, but it's not useful to be fully human. We, he can't deny that there's things that are happening in the world that are ugly, but how, when there's ugly things, how people come together to help, how there's so much goodness in the world. And so this was a short video he made and the words that go with the song are everything that happens calls me, I should say it calls us to awaken and remind that we are made of love. Humans are made of love. And no matter what's going on from evil, there are good people and more good people in the world that are willing to help. So here we go. Everything that happens calls me to awaken and remind we are made of love we are made of love body's made of clay body's made of mud get wet in the rain get washed in the flood body's carried in the river stream like turning clothes in a washing machine but it's climbing is high but it's falling is down when we're out all day we get burned in the sun and oh how we are one how we are everything that happens calls me to awaken and remind we are made
-hmm. So I leave you on that. We are, we are made of love. Yes. And yes. I extend my heartfelt wishes for all of the healing of all of the children, the refugees, the blessings to all those who are helping and taking them in. And may we all work together and pray and intend for peace to come, for the world to, to wake up and to stop the violence. Thank you. Thank you.